Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington from Learn Your Land, and I'd like to introduce you today to Pleurotus ostriatus, the common oyster mushroom. Why don't you say hi for us today, Pleurotus? Well, I guess he's a little shy, so I'll speak on his behalf. I'm hanging out here at Hartwood Acres in Western Pennsylvania on December 20th. It's a little cool, but I thought I'd look around and see any neat things that I could find today. And I found some cool things. However, the one I'm probably most excited about is this small yet beautiful cluster of oyster mushrooms. And there's some right up here, there's some down here, and there's some around the back which you probably can't see. And this is one of the most choice edible mushrooms out there. You can find them in most grocery stores actually. There are a lot of cultivated varieties. However, I usually advocate finding them and harvesting them from the wild. This is one of the easiest mushrooms to identify. So not only does it taste great, not only is it slightly medicinal as well, but it's very easy to identify. It's characterized by its growth on wood in shelf-like clusters, and they kind of fan out from the wood. So you usually won't find these growing up out of the ground unless it's on buried wood. The cap color is usually whitish to light tan, sometimes yellow, light brown. Pleurotus ostriatus, this one right here, is characterized by having darker shades on its cap. So it's not pure white like some of the other oyster mushrooms. And this one's usually found later in the year, so fall through early winter, though you could probably find any variety of oyster mushroom all year round as long as the conditions are right. So as I said, this one grows out from wood. If you look underneath the cap, you'll see that the gills run down the cap of the mushroom, and the gills are white to a pale yellow. There isn't really a prominent stalk on this mushroom like you would see on some mushrooms that grow from wood, but you will see sometimes a little nub and the cap comes out from that. But if you find these mushrooms growing on wood and it's growing, fanning out from the wood, almost in shelf-like clusters, if you look underneath there are gills, there are not pores like a polypore mushroom, then chances are you might have some variety of the oyster mushroom. And these deposit a white spore print, sometimes a pale lilac depending on the variety, but this one will deposit a white spore print. Now not only are oyster mushrooms edible, choice edible mushrooms, but they're medicinal as well. They're not really recognized as a medicinal mushroom, but there are several studies documenting the medicinal effects of Pleurotus species. And one that just came out this year in 2015 discovered that a hot water extract from this mushroom demonstrated potent antibacterial properties against Staphylococcus aureus and E. coli. And hot water extracts are very easy to make at home. Anytime you would make a soup, that would be a hot water extract. If you would dry this out and make a tea, that would be a hot water extract as well. So whenever you're consuming this mushroom, remember, you're not just getting vitamins, you're not just getting minerals, you're not just getting small amounts of protein, but we're also getting these medicinal benefits that are absolutely essential for optimal health. And I encourage you to get out and look for oyster mushrooms, especially this time of year. Chances are you'll probably find them if you look hard enough. And not only will you find oyster mushrooms, but there are plenty of other species to find, plants and mushrooms. I've been out for only about an hour and I found sulfur tuft mushrooms. Now these are toxic, you don't want to eat these. I found turkey tail. These are choice medicinal mushrooms. I found a cluster of mycena, and I'm sure there's plenty more out there. The day is still young, so I'm gonna keep looking. And remember, no matter what time of year it is, no matter what day it is, it's always a good day to get outside and to connect yourself to your environment. One of the easiest ways to connect ourselves is through our food choices, because we all have to eat, right? And so why not make some of those food choices the foods from the wild? Thanks for watching this video, really appreciate it. If you wanna learn more about plants and mushrooms and the beautiful ecosystem that we live in and how to connect ourselves directly to this ecosystem, then I encourage you to check out Learn Your Land Com, which is a community and database of naturalists and nature-based events in your area. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time.